What's up guys, Toogie here back again, and this is the first episode of Matthews vs. Line, a my new series in Hockey Ultimate Team here on NHL 17. Before we get down to business, let me explain to you the rules of this series. Pretty straightforward. Matthews and Line are both going to be compared for the rest of their lives. This series will be no different as we directly compare the two as they each take control of their own team and we simply see who is the better player, who ends up with the better team, who ends up with the most points. Those two directly correlate as well. So let me explain further. Yeah, every episode, we play at least one game with Team Matthews and Team Line. Now, each team starts off being built out of the starter packs. As you can see here, all of these players eligible to be in the opening teams. But for every point that one of these players gets, that earns us an upgrade. That upgrade will be decided by both of us, just about mutually. I've decided to take a different spin on it. So what we're going to do with those upgrades is we look at the opponent's team that we just played. I will pick, and I'll, I'll explain why I pick in a minute, <laughs> but I will pick two players from that team that I think would be a great addition to the club. From there, the decision is up to you. So let's say that I pick Ryan Spooner and Michael Grabner. You guys, at the end of the episode, will then have the choice to vote for Spooner, Grabner, or a third option, you could vote for a 7.5k pack, and the best player from that team is who we will pick. So, pretty straightforward there. I should mention as well that players are exclusive. So, for example, if Ryan Spooner were to win that poll and he's on Team Matthews, he cannot play for Team Line A. Just to add a little bit more of a challenge and to make sure that we see different players. Now, the reason I'm doing the upgrade system this way is because I am limited in what I can do. I have a couple hundred thousand coins, but that would go very, very quickly. If we see a team and there's a hut hero, obviously I'd love to add that player, but that simply wouldn't be sustainable for the long term in this series. So to make sure that this, you know, continues at a good pace, I'll be picking the players, making sure that we can afford them, and that, you know, we're good to go. So I do have my limitations. Of course, I don't have any EA connections. I don't make a shitload of money off of YouTube that I can immediately pump back in to this series. So I'm doing what I can with the limitations that I have. But regardless, I'm excited for this series. I hope you guys are as well. And let's get right down to it. Let's look at Team Matthews. We'll be using his team first and foremost. We have the Toronto line up top decent starting team not amazing by any stretch but i'm hoping that top line can do some damage for us as you get a look at the defense that third pairing should just be destroying everybody cam ward will be the starter and then for synergies you have heavy hitter on for clutterbuck hartman borowetsky borowiecki whatever and radko gudis so that at least makes it a bit more tolerable <laughs> that they are the third pairing and then we have team shot blocking applied for both teams so i'm looking forward to, to seeing that and again it makes having this you know starter team a little bit more tolerable i think i've explained the rules thoroughly enough if not don't worry i'm sure i'll repeat myself every episode just to make sure but guys i don't want to waste any more of your time let's get down to it team matthews what can he do in his first game with his team Let's find out. Our game is underway with that face off. We're Koch. We're Koch stepping in. Patrick We're Koch almost gets the opening goal. Matthews would have had an assist on that. Close Speak of the devil. Field. Can he retain it? No, he cannot. We're Koch the interception. Gets it from Matthews. Wanted to not go there. Dan Girardi, what can we do? Backdoor for Holland. Around the back, it's Matthews. Matthews backdoor for William Nylander and a glove save there. Still have possessions. Nylander. Nylander. What can we do? Down low. 
for Matthews. Back for Nylander. Quick shot and he buries it. And just like that, we have our first upgrade. The first shift from Team Matthews results in an upgrade. The assist, Nylander and Holland also involves that top line gets it done what a snipe on Anders Nielsen Glenn Denning Adam Glenn Denning Glenn Denning gets it back backhand and he sniped it holy shit Adam Glenn Denning making things happen not sure how that went in on Nielsen I will take it. Matthews not involved. The unassisted goal. Austin Matthews, the huge hit on Kosmachuk. Can he make the turn? Yes, he can. And Austin Matthews is denied. We still have the puck, though. Weirkoch with the shot deflected in front. That should be another assist for Austin Matthews. Peter Holland with the goal. And indeed it is. Patrick Weirkoch has been great in this game so far. That is now two upgrades already. A little bit of lag as well, so that's concerning. Kind of hoping for the rage quit. Glendening. Nylander. For Lyles and a huge save. Matthews on the doorstep. I don't think he got a piece of it. That's going to be John Michael Lyles' goal. The former Leaf. He makes it 4-0 in the first period. No point for Austin Matthews, despite him being on the ice. We're stuck at two upgrades. Matthews. Austin Matthews. There it is. Right off the opening draw to start the second period. That is the hat trick of upgrades. That will create a very interesting debate that we'll talk about a little bit more once this game is over. Nylander. Maintains. Nylander for Peter Holland. What a save. Austin gets it low for Holland. Nylander really fucked us there. Holland for Nylander. He buries it. He buries it. I feel sorry for my opponent here. Obviously, the upgrades are going to come hot and heavy to start this series. No upgrade on that goal, though. But a beautiful goal for William Nylander. I'll take it. Tory Mitchell gets through. Mitchell to Clutterbuck. And a huge save from Nelson. It still goes in. What an effort from Anders Nilsson. Cal Clutterbuck is on the board. It is 7 0. He turns it over. Matthews for Nylander. He buries it. Upgrade number four on the night. Good, good moves from Eric Howla. The shot, big save. Holy shit, Anders Nilsson. He throws it away. We'll take advantage with Andrew Shaw. 9-0. I commend him for not leaving. Obviously, it's a little bit unfair, but I'll take it. So at the moment, guys, the lag's only gotten worse. Every time he gets the puck, he continues to ice it. So I'm just going to try to kill the clock here because I really don't want to risk a disconnect to start this series. Mercifully, this game has ended. I'm not going to talk too much about it. It could have been a lot worse for my opponent, as you would expect. A very unfair matchup for him. He's a trooper for staying there the entire time. I'm not going to sit here and brag like, oh yeah, I totally kicked his ass. Like, no, it was an unfair matchup. But regardless, the upgrades will stand. Austin Matthews, a four-point performance. What I'm going to do and like I said, this is still the early stages. I mean, it is the first episode. There's still a lot of room for changes. So what I'm going to do here, rather than the poll being player A, player B, or a 7.5k pack, as a reward for getting a hat trick of points, so to speak, it's just going to be between player A and player B, and we're going to reward ourselves with that 7.5k pack. And 
you guys can decide from there. Should the best player from the seven and a half K pack be allowed in? Or should I be allowed to take, you know, four of them or three of them since we get the upgrade? A lot of room for decisions, but regardless, we're going to take one player from the opposing team. That'll be up to you guys. And we're going to get a seven and a half K pack. Looking at the rest of the team, though, and their performance in that game, we will bring it up. There is still a lot of room for debate, too, about rage quit rewards if we want to have any of that. But the top line, needless to say, pretty damn dominant in that game. So first up, guys, let's decide what two players will be involved in the poll from the opponent's team. A couple of decent options, despite it being a starter team. We have the improved Kyle Brodziak. We have Dale Weiss on the fourth line. He would activate Relentless 4 check for us. And then defensively, I'd say Cody Cece is the best option. He would bring us to, I believe, five out of six on tape to tape. And then the goaltending, improved Robin Leonard. Might not be a bad option at all. So while I think we could use CC, my two options, your two options, are going to be between Dale Weiss to activate Relentless Forecheck for the team or the improved Robin Leonard. And of course, step two involving the Matthews upgrades. Let's get the 7.5k pack. We went with the base gold pack rather than the expansion pack just because we don't have too many expansion players and we get Zdeno Chara first thing. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Again, it is up to you guys how we want to do this. Of course, we'll have the player that's being decided in the poll, Weiss or Robin Leonard. And then do we get access to all of these players? I mean, we're going to have at least two more players. We get Vernon Fiddler as well. Uh, we're actually close to face-off master, I think. But obviously not as big of a factor as our rare player in Chara. We also get Braden McNabb, who has heavy hitter. So he could step in on the third pair. But let me know for sure. How should we handle these upgrades now, of course, that we have gotten this pack? We also got two logos that we'll put towards a set. But from the pack, Zdeno Chara, not too bad at all. Some decent improvements coming to Team Matthews. Now it is time to see what Team Line A can do. Can he match the four-point performance? Again, the lineup's basically the same aside from the forwards of course the coach is also still there heavy hitter is applied tape to tape is applied as is team shop locking let's see what team line a can do and he shoots one, brings us what a crazy down. bounce that was things up in their own end. Slid to Nylander. Nylander. Oh my god, the pass in <laughs> Nylander couldn't finish. If only William Nylander was a lefty, that would have been a goal for sure. Willie, William Nylander to Andrew Shaw, and he doesn't score. Patrick, oh. Good reach from line A. Back to the point. It's Weirkoch, and he drives it wide. Good break here. Rene Bork can't get it through. Back for line A, and he gets it. Patrick line A drags it through the five hole. We're playing a much, a much more, it's tough to say. I'm going to say a much better opponent. Just flat out. It is what it is. Call a spade a spade. We're playing a better opponent. So it's been a bit more difficult, but the bright side to that is not only is he a better opponent, he has a better team. So we might not get as many upgrades, but compared to say Dale Weiss, we might end up with someone like a Gostas Bear or an Andre Palat. So it's a good back and forth, a good give and take, and we get one upgrade thanks to the line A goal. And my defenseman tripped him. I didn't even see it, to be honest. In this game, they've been outplayed in a lot of areas, especially with the time of possession. But one lucky shift or one lucky bounce, they're right back in it. Jesus Christ, EA. Fix your game. 
fix your fucking game. A pass meant to go around the back to Radko Gudis. Instead, sneaks through and beats Cam Ward. And then this game's tied. EA, fix your fucking game, please. Your music's bad and you should feel bad. Greening. Hartman. Can't hit the net. Oh my god, I've said that so many times. I don't know how many replays I'll show, but that's been a big theme here is players not hitting the net. And lag still. Not sure what's going on tonight. Brooks like. Finds Hartman. Man, no room to pull back in. Carried from the defensive zone towards center. Directing that one. Holland for Shaw. Andrew Shaw walks in. And forehand was the right way to go. A gigantic goal for us. 57 seconds to go. Andrew Shaw avoids the Tyler Myers hit. He gives us the lead back. Hopefully we can hang on. Good hit from Gudis. How was that a pen? Was that a charge? Cross-checking. Awesome. The most random of fucking penalties. And it's at the perfect time. Son of a bitch. Come on, Brooks. We need this face off win. We don't get it. We don't get it. And it gets swiped in. EA. EA. Come on, man. Come on. The first goal and then that. A cross-checking penalty, which I can totally control. Lucic bats it in. And we're tied. Line A, we need you to be a hero here. That's not a very good start. That's a hold, ref. He didn't have the puck. Come on. You're calling cross-checks for nothing. Random-ass cross-checking penalties, but that's not a hold. When I was without the puck for quite a while. Rene Bork is out of time, and we are going to overtime. All right. Let's do this. To say I'm beyond frustrated is an understatement. There was no... No reason for that. Both goals beyond fluky. Maybe we can come away with the win, though. Line A. Line A. What can we do here? Find the back door for Weir Koch, and Halak saves that. What a fucking save by Yaroslav Halak. Oh, my God. What a fucking save. That is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Rene Bork out here. Let's see. I'd love to go for the tie-up. Go to, but Bork tried to drop for Girardi. He went way too far away. Switch me to where Koch. I know where he's going, EA. I know where he's going. God damn. We haven't gone to overtime too much in Bork's battalion. Hopefully, we don't make a theme of it here. It is stressful as hell. Yeah, not happening. Not happening. We're Koch. Get rid of it. There we go. Come on. Two on one. Let's go, Weir Koch. Let's go. I'd love for Rene Bork to get on side, please. Bork, backdoor for Weir Koch, and he's robbed again and again by Yaroslav Halak. Oh my god. Adam Glendening gets out here at a good time. Good poke. Weir Koch for Eric Howla. Does he have the space? No, he doesn't. Tyler Myers is a bit too fast. Holy shit. Good play. Weir Koch wants to go to Glenn Denning. Stickler from Glenn Denning, and apparently that's just going to go right through his body. Fuck, I guess I'm happy it wasn't a fucking slashing pen. Good play here. His defenseman's way back. Eric Howla. Speed through Fowler. How is he keeping up with me when he's fucking backskating? Like, I know it's Eric Howla. And yes, I'm very annoyed that I'm even having to play this overtime. But come on, man. You know, skating full speed. He's keeping up with me. Good save there. Lyles, you better maintain that. Adam Glendening. Everybody's faster than my players, apparently. Glendening for line A. Patrick, what can we do here? What can we do? It needs to be on line A's tape. It has to be. Patrick, line A gets the goal in overtime. On the ice at the right time, and we avoid disaster. We go to overtime in our first game. But Patrick Line comes up big. Two goal performance, two upgrades. Oh my God, that was stressful. That was, that was beyond stressful. 
Oh my god, but a two-goal performance for Patrick Laine. Jesus. Not a fan of overtime at all. Man, I will take it though. Let's get a look at the other point totals. Two-point night for both Laine and John Michael Lyles. Fort Clendenning, Howla, and Holland also getting in there. And of course the other goal from Andrew Shaw. Three shots for Line A, two goals. Efficiency, that is what I like to see. All right, guys, it's time to look at our opponent's team. We have two upgrades for Team Line A, and I think I'm gonna go with one pole deciding between two forwards, the other pole deciding between two defensemen. Like I said, a more difficult game, but as a result, better rewards. So for the forwards, it's down to this Evander Kane and this Andre Palat. Now, Palat, I feel like, has a slightly better card, and I do feel like he'd be a strong addition to this team, but Evander Kane, slightly, maybe slightly below, but he also has the same synergy style as Patrick Laine, so that is something to consider. Of course, there are some solid players on this team, Little, Lucic, Nugent Hopkins especially. I was strongly considering Ryan Nugent Hopkins to get a better center to play alongside Patrick Laine. But for now, this poll is going to be between Andre Palat and Evander Kane. The second decision you guys have to make, two left-handed defensemen. First off, we have Cam Fowler, who has a really strong card. The 89 acceleration, agility, and speed with the 87 defensive awareness and the 88 stick checking. Not a bad card at all with the, I believe the tape to tape synergy style, which will be pretty handy for us. And then Shane Goss Despair, again, another strong card, has a synergy alongside Patrick Laine. So again, that could put him uh, and could make him the favorite for the poll. But regardless, we are getting two very strong players Matthews, it's more quantity over quality at the moment. And after the first game for Team Line, certainly quality over quantity. So we'll be adding either Cam Fowler Shane, or Shane Goff to spare, and potentially Evander Kane or Andre Pilat. Unless you guys, of course, decide between the 7.5k pack reward, which you could. But in this instance, in this instance, I mean, yeah, we're... We're going to go with one of these guys. And you might, matter of fact, I might take the 7.5k pack option out of there because people might just pick at the troll. That might just be added in a situation where neither option is that exciting. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll put it up there anyway. I don't know. You, you, you'll know. You'll know once you look. But anyways, guys, that is it. Episode 1 of Matthews vs. Line A is in the books. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of this new series of mine and of course your job is just beginning make sure to vote on the polls of course you have decisions to make for both teams let me know what you think of the decision to get the seven and a half k pack for team matthews and should we be allowed to use all three players or should it be just zidane chara as he was the best player in the pack Stanley Cup cards are out already. Pretty sweet. It'd be nice to get my hands on that Henrik Lundqvist, that is for sure. Anyways, I am off topic. I am off track. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to the feedback from this episode. And yeah, as always, if you did enjoy, make sure to support the video and support the channel in any way you deem necessary. Although, of course, just watching the video to begin with is good enough for me. And until next time, guys, hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you later.